Hello Egyptology lovers, so now is the time to do the largest project I'm going to have. This may span months to complete. Uh, it's going to be a, a piece of art, a large complicated piece of artwork. What you see here is a large papyrus. I purchased these sheets from Son of the Pharaoh. It's about 70 centimeters by, a, by 100 centimeters. And I glued it all together, the papyrus. There are about seven sheets. This now measures six meters, so about 238.75 inches. My goal is to make 10 plates, which is about 23.6 each plate, so about two feet each plate. What's going to consist of is the Book of the Dead. So a famous, about 189 chapters are in total, not all of them included in there usually, but what I'm going to do is try to choose and pick the ones that suit me and then create the Book of the Dead, illustration and hieroglyphs included. I may add to this papyrus down the line, maybe add another 10 plates. So we'll see if that could be 12 meters, but stay tuned for that. I'll explain everything in detail. Egyptology lovers. So now we're going to start slowly building the, uh, the book of the dead here. We're going to draw the, uh, the borderline for it. So I'm going to follow the middle kingdom style book of the dead, like the uh, book of Ani and Hunifer, uh, where there's going to be borders. So what I'm going to do is starting from one end, from the ends of each paper on each side. So from the length and the width, I'm going to create a three inch border. So for example, starting from about say here, that's three inches. So from here, I'll have a line and at half an inch of each will be basically the colored line. You'll see what I mean when I get to it. They always had these like decorative borders that went all the way down the papyrus. So there'll be three inches uh, overlap from here or an overlay. And then another three inches here on the very top over there as well. So that's going to create the basic start and that's going to go all the way through across the papyrus all the six meters down and then once we've drawn that in then we'll start painting it so stay tuned for that Hey guys, so now the papyrus, what we've done is outlining. We're drawing the lines and setting it up and squaring it up so it goes all the way down the papyrus and doesn't deviate. The center is going to be basically our reference point, but you can see here now that the gray has been put in, so with the pencil it, and then we're going to draw all the way down. So stay tuned for hey the everyone. rest. So I'm just going to show you how important it is to keep it square. So we're always using one reference point, the top line. We don't go back and forth. That'll create a warping effect. So what's important is keep that reference point, keep the square there, and then measure against with the ruler. And you'll discover as I mark my ruler, so it helps me with my reference point. You could see here, this was the original line and line, and now this is the real line. That's where it's supposed to be on this ruler here. And this is the reference. Now that's important, it's a 16th of a difference, but that difference can drag on and warp all the way down the papyrus. So that's what we're gonna do. But once we have our lines and a long length, then we can just use the ruler to go all the way down. We don't have to worry so much. All right, but we'll measure every little bit. So stay tuned. I'll try to finish this up. Right, everyone. So this is the system we're going to adopt. We set up a ruler and then we make sure that it was lined up straight on both ends. Same measurement on one end of each side of the table. This table is going to be our square reference. Then we use our square here to make sure that by pushing against it, that the table is aligned and that our line is marked here. And then what we're going to do is there's our other mark over there to make sure that the center stays the same. And now we just roll the papyrus, our papyrus, and every little bit, we can drag it on to a certain distance. Let's say like that a little bit. And then you could see we come over, make sure the line fits down the middle here. Make sure our square is lined against the table. And then we come back over and there's our line marked right over there. And then we go all the way across and find our arrow. And there it is. And then we mark the line there. And that's it. That's our dot. And then we draw the line from reference point over here where you can see that line there to there. So that keeps the center area where we're going to draw squared. It doesn't deviate. And that's the point of the, uh, the actual uh, measurements, making sure everything stays straight. We can cut and trim the ends, but we've got to keep the, se the, uh, the center so another straight. Another technique we use to make sure our, our first initial line is straight is once we have our main line positioned here and we've decided on the square, you can see the square, it, it uh, latches onto the table and it creates that line. Once we have this position with over there as well, the marker where we have right down there, then all we got to do is really just drag the papyrus and mark at every position we like, like that. See, it's marked over here. And that's it. You could see how the line is a straight 
without moving the papyrus, making sure it's always staying steady. So there it is. That's a way to keep it nice and lined and squared. Hey everyone, so you can see now the papyrus is basically draw drawn out. I've drawn the top line. I did the two uh, bars to cover the two separate colors for the papyrus uh, borderline, which is pretty standard for a Middle Kingdom uh, design. Uh, and over here you can see I'm basically drawing over the line. Uh, I have to go now, the, the papyrus warps a little, so I have to adjust the line as I moved by shifting the papyrus so you get a good size dimension. So for example, I'm not sure if you can see this here. This is about a two inch from the end of the, the papyrus. So a two inch here, and then it has to be two inch over there as well. So it keeps it in that nice line. Now, if you roll this out set of six meters out, you'll see the deviation a little, but in the end, it's the idea to keep the papyrus from, uh, the lines from kind of tilting all the way down and completely creating space up there, which we don't want. So this is pretty standard. So now what we're gonna do is just kind of draw in the line. That's what I'm doing right now. I just fill out the lines. I've uh, lined them up properly and make sure that they're moving in appropriate position. All right, everyone. So now we've reached the end of the line here. The ruler has basically been drawn. You can see the line has ended pretty much here, right over there. So you could see that now I left it this way. Now I could draw the line coming all the way up and that completes the papyrus uh, basically, but I want to basically add more to it. So I'll just give it about, about a three inch space here or overlay and then I can add more papyrus to it afterwards. But the next step now is to start coloring the border starting from the very beginning over there. And uh, we'll do that tomorrow, guys. So I'll show you without. Egyptology hey, lovers. So today we're going to start the painting of the border. So you can see the border here. We're going to do pretty much the border coming over here and there. And all the way down the papyrus that I have for about six meters. Uh, so now what we're going to do is I found these colors. I have several colors in my box over here. But in the colors, this, this is what I mean by border. You can see here. That's the border right there. This was more like a border frame motif that they used in the New Kingdom, starting in the New Kingdom. So um, I found these two identical colors. They're pretty close. So you can see that's pretty close to this one. The camera kind of changes the color, but it's close to that one. And this right here is close to the darker color. So these are the two colors I'm gonna use to create the border and all the way down. So we're gonna do that and stay tuned and I'll show you a bit of a sample of what's gonna look like. Hey everyone, so you can see here, uh, with the painting, we used um, this light color right over here, uh, like a beige creamy color. And you can see now the border, how it's going to be painted, going up and down this way. And then once we've completed this section, uh, we'll go ahead and put the darker color at the very bottom. So I'll show you guys what the darker color looks like. All right, everyone. So here now you can see this is the darker color. And that's what's going to get spread over here. And it's going to basically create the second row of this border design so i'm going to show you guys now a little bit what it's going to look like once it passes over here so that's it this is pretty much what i'm going to be doing for a little while just kind of creating the border and preparing it and then i can work on the, the drawing and the design of the papyrus so yeah that's that's it right there all right thanks for watching guys Hey everyone, so the first border is complete here. You could see that uh, this stretches out all the way and it goes even further, about six meters down there. So the next thing to do is to work on the other color to do the uh, second color that goes with this and then complete that all the way along as well. And that should be done tomorrow. Hey everyone, so today we're continuing the uh, second color border here. I've already done that section and now I'm working around and we're gonna do the whole six meters of the papyrus. So that's gonna be uh, pretty much the frame in which then after that, we're going to begin deciding how many plates we want and which chapters of the Book of the Dead will be involved in this papyrus. So stay tuned for that, guys. Hey 
Hey everybody, so welcome back. So now is the completion of the frame border. So this is the end of one end. So I'll just show you what it looks like. I'm gonna have to roll it up the other way so you can see what it looks like. Try to get this done fast. You can see the border is completely done. I'm gonna bring it all the way to the front so you guys can see what it looks like at the very beginning of the chapter. So that's how the border is done. It is. This is six meters long and the border is done. So now all that's left to do is start working now the very end and measure the plates. So that's the that's the video. Thanks for watching guys. Hey everybody, so now I decided to do a measurement from one end of the frame, not the papyrus, but the frame. So the frame is straight on one end, there's a probably three inch gap there, uh, an overlay so I can give it that nice space. So I measured that if I want to cut this up in 10 plates or 10 sections, then this would be approximately 59, 59 centimeters. So each plate would be that long up to say there. So that's a good size, I think, for a good frame. So I'm going to do that and uh, I'll divide the texts, I mean the pages, and then from there I should have kind of a reference point and then go from there. Hey, Egyptology lovers, so now what we're doing is we're taking the frame that you see over here and we have to measure. So I already measured it and these are the calculations that you see. So I've rolled it up over to about a meter. That's a meter stick right there. So this is the drawn border. Now, it all measures from the border, not the paper, but the border to the very end of the other border. If you unroll this, it's 5.89 meters, which is about 231.88 inches, which is 19 and 19 feet and 3 inches. Now, the frame from the top to bottom, so here if you could see top to bottom of this, that's 18 and a half inches. Now, if I want to get 10 frames so I can have 10 chapters of the Book of the Dead or mixture of them, that brings me to 58.9 centimeters, which is 23 inches at the two feet I'm looking for, which is one and 11 inches, one foot 11 inches. And that gives me 10 frames. Now, if I bring it, instead of going from 18 and a half inches to 23 inches, if I do 18 and a half inches by 18 and a half inches, then from there, I'm able to get 12 frames, two additional frames compared to the other one, which is one uh, foot and six inches. So that's something I'm going to decide on. The frames don't have to be all equal. Some parts of the Books of the Dead, uh, depending on the chapters, were never as the same size. So we'll see how I'm going to create this. All right, so now for me to figure out if I have 10 plates to do or 12 plates to do, depending on this uh, Book of the Dead. So I'll decide from there based on what I'm going to choose for the chapters and how I'm going to illustrate them. Some illustrations will be full, a full square or they could be half where the hieroglyphs will be down here and the scenes can be up there depending on the uh, late kingdom they used to do that as well so we'll see i'll figure this all out and we'll work it out on the next video i'll explain more in detail what i'm going to do